All right, welcome. Today we're going to be working on uh, Cengage Tutorial 9, Case Problem 2, Bridger College Student Loan. And I'm going to begin this assignment in the same way I begin all of these assignments. I'm going to first uh, open up my file in a new browser tab so that I can see the entire file, the entire page, and then also so that I can sh shrink that and get rid of it uh, so I can have more room to see my code. And then my next thing that I always do is I always read the summary uh, because I want to understand what it is that I'm working on before I begin working on it. So this one, the Bridger College Student Union. John Barris manages the website for the Student Union at Bridger College in Bozeman, Montana. The Student Union provides daily activities for the students on campus. As a website manager, part of Sean's job is to keep the site up to date on the latest activities sponsored by the Union. At the beginning of each week, he revises a set of seven web pages detailing events for each day in the upcoming week. Do we have all? We don't have seven pages. Sean would like the website to display the current day's schedule ah, within an aside element. To do this, the page must determine the day of the week and then load the appropriate HTML code into the element. He would also like the today at the union page to display the current day and date. The figure below shows a preview of the page he wants you to create. So this is the preview of the page and this is a big step for our first venture into JavaScript. Hopefully they're going to ask us to do some small things at first. Uh, working with days and dates, uh, I personally would not have that be our first venture into JavaScript. But let's see what we have to do. All right? Maybe we don't have much to do this time. Let's, let's have a look at it. All right. First, we're going to open up the BC Union HTML. I have that here. Uh, and the BC Today JS, that's the JavaScript file. So I'm going to open up that. All right. And we already have a bunch of JavaScript in here. So that's nice. We'll have a look at what that is in a moment. Uh, it says put your name and the date in each one. So I'll put my name and the date. It is November. Okay. Linking the JavaScript file, go to the bcunion.html and directly above the closing head tag right here, insert a script element that links the page to the bctoday.javascript file. Defer the loading of the script until after the rest of the page is loaded by the browser. Okay, so the defer, that's going to be that attribute on a JavaScript element that allows us to load the JavaScript after the actual HTML on the page is loaded, because if we don't do that, then what our browser interpreter is going to do, it's going to interpret each line one at a time, and when it gets to that JavaScript, if we don't put defer, it's going to halt all the HTML and then do the JavaScript. And in the meantime, if the user has a slow connection, they won't see anything. They'll be waiting for the JavaScript to finish. So we want to defer that until the end so that the page can be loaded for the user as quickly as possible. So the way we do the JavaScript, it is a script element. Okay. We've done these in a previous assignment, but we weren't actually doing any JavaScript yet. So this one, we have the script. We have to give it the source file. Source equals a string, right? And the source file is bc underscore today .js. That's the name of the file. It's not in any special directories. We can see right here, it's in our sandbox directory. 
We don't have to label anything for that because all the files are in the same directory. And then we want to use the defer attribute to force this to load at the end. So what happens is the HTML, the browser is going to read this, get to this JavaScript, notice that it's marked as defer, add it to a list of potentially other JavaScript files that are also deferred, and then the browser is going to process all the HTML file first, and when it finally gets to the end, then it will do that list of JavaScript files that it had deferred. So we're just going to have the one, and we want to finish our script element. Okay, the script element is not a self-closing tag, so we do need to close it. Uh, and actually, there could potentially be JavaScript written inside of it. Ours doesn't have that. Ours has a URL. So that completes this step. We're not going to be tested on it, though. And then we go to the next step here. Uh, go to the today.js file. So now, potentially, we're done with the HTML. We may be done. We may have just work in the JavaScript file. At the top of the file, insert a statement indicating that the code will be handing, handled by the browser, assuming strict usage. So what this means, and let me go ahead and type this in here, we make a string use strict. All right, it's a, it's a unique command in JavaScript. You have to put it at the very first line and that's why Cengage left a blank for us. And you have to type it exactly like this. Nothing else, you just use strict here. Let me make an extra space, okay? What this does is it tells our browser that it's going to enforce, um, strictly enforce a newer version of JavaScript, not the old version of JavaScript. Okay, the, the old style of JavaScript would allow, um, it would allow some things to happen that had become commonplace with, uh, with developers and coders that um, it, it was allowed by browsers, but it, they, were, they were bending or breaking the rules for many, many years. Um, and so when we say use strict, what we're telling the browser is to, is specifically, we are not going to bend the rules. We're going to follow very good coding practices and we're going to write everything the way it's supposed to be written. And we want the browser to hold us to that level. And you may ask, well, why would we want to do that? Uh, well, we want to do that because we want our code to be as properly written and as fully functional and error free as possible. And the best, one of the best ways to do that is to have a tool enforce us to those rules so that now we have to follow those rules. And if we don't follow those rules, the page will, uh, the JavaScript won't function. It will just crash and it won't function. Um, if we don't do this, then there's a lot of shortcuts and things that can be taken that uh, are potential security risks as well. Um, and so we don't want to do any of that. So we're going to use strict, uh, and that's what they told us to do anyway. I don't think we hit a check mark for that. Not yet. Okay. Let's move along. Uh, assuming strict usage. Note that within the file is the get event function, which returns the HTML code for the daily events at the union given a day number ranging from zero for Sunday to six for Saturday. So let's take a really quick look. This is our first JavaScript assignment. This is a very big function. Okay, it's called get events. Let me maximize my code here so we can look at this long, long function. Okay, and let's just walk through a little bit of it. I don't think we have to edit this function though, but the way we write a function in JavaScript, we have the keyword function, and then we name our function. In this case, it's been named get event. And then we can pass inside parentheses, we can pass an argument to that function. And 
the way a function works is much like a in math you may have a sine cosine tangent function you give it an input it does something and it gives you an output and that's what this function is going to do we give it an input this variable day the input that we give it we don't have to name it day the function once it gets the input it's naming it day for its own purposes inside the function okay outside the function we could call it whatever um, this curly brace starts the function starts the function content inside that curly brace all this content is there and then at the very very end is the matching curly brace that ends the content of the function uh, if you forget one of these your function is probably not going to work and if it does it's going to be including some other code that happened uh, later on you have to make sure that all your curly braces are paired up whenever you have a starting one you have to have a paired up ending one uh, and use strict actually is going to help us with that so inside the function it's going to create a variable called event html the semicolon ends this command all we've done is create a variable it has no value yet it just we've opened a place in memory and says this place in memory is for the event html variable we'll put stuff in there later and then we have this switch command which we'll get to later but essentially what we're going to do is depending on the input the input can be any number from zero to six so zero one two three four five six representing the seven days uh, depending on which day if the day equals zero we go to this part of code called zero and we execute this all the way up until the break which will stop the execution if they could if it was input a one we go to this case and we do all this code until the break and then we get out of the switch okay so let's put today is a, a tuesday so we'll input two for tuesday that's the case in the switch so tuesday events now we're actually going to set that event html that we had declared we're going to set it equal to uh, this long string that's it and they have a bunch of lines separated by this backslash at the end of every line so that they can make one long continuous string uh, and if you look inside this string you'll recognize that it's actually a bunch of html so we're setting the event html equal to a bunch of html written as a, a string of characters in javascript and then we break and that's all we do and each day that's exactly what's happening for each case of each day here they just have a different string so these are all just uh, data lists with the events of the day for that day of the week um, and then sean the person there he edits this file every week and just puts the event of the week in there um, at the very end of the function the output is whatever the value is for event html so not too difficult of a function it takes an input a number representing the day of the week it switches to one of these sections based on what that number is grabs a bunch of data sticks it in the event html and then in the end that's what the output is All right, so our next job is to declare some other variables right, we have a few of them here so we're going to first declare a variable called this date uh, and it's very important in javascript in many programming languages actually that we declare a variable the case is very sensitive so this date with an uppercase d and everything else in lowercase that is very important if we have a typo and we have a lowercase d or an uppercase some different letter we'll actually be creating 
a different variable. We can potentially have two variables with what looks like the same name, but one is uppercase and one is lowercase. And as far as the program is concerned, they're completely different, even though they look similar to us. So it's very important that the day, uh, that the, the characters in here, the case, uppercase, lowercase, no spaces, spaces, do not put spaces in your names. They will not work. Uh, we make sure that those are correct. So we're gonna create a variable called this date and we're going to make it contain a date object. So the most difficult thing we've done so far is this. Okay, the way we create a variable is we use the keyword bar and we use set the name of it, this date, that's what they've told us, and this variable. Now in the function, they just created a variable and they said var event HTML and they didn't give it a value right away. We are going to give it a value right away and we're going to say that it is equal to a date object which is um, similar to a function call. You're going to see that it looks like it's a function call. Um, when we set it to a date object we need to use the keyword new which is going to create a new object for us because date is a complex variable type. It is not a simple number uh, or string of characters. A date is actually complex. It has other functions that it can do on its own. Uh, and so we need to create a new date. And the date creation function is date with a capital D. So var this date equals new date. Uh, and we'll, we'll see what this does when we actually try to use it. All right, the next variable we're gonna create is called date string. This variable will contain the text of the this date variable using local conventions. So. Let's work on this one. Date string equals, so this is going to create, contain the text from the this date variable. So one of the things that happened when we created this date and we assigned a new date to it, that new date is actually now. When this executes and the new date happens, it will be that moment in time. Um, so anytime somebody runs this, if it's a Tuesday or a Wednesday, um, it will be that date. Okay, so now date string is going to be set to this date and it's going to be the text value of the day of the week is it date string containing the text of this date uh, not the day of the week just the text value so one of the things that's nice um, Cengage gives it to us other text editing programs are going to give it to us as well um, is when we type in our variable that we have created this date and the program knows that it is a date object when we put the dot here we're going to get this pop up and we're going to get all the things that we can possibly do to this uh, and access all these all these parameters that we can access um, remember I said that the date object is a complex object and that's because the date ob object has all these parameters and methods that we can possibly use. So it says using local conventions. So if we scroll through this list, we do have a couple of options that are locale in the word. So that maybe will help us find which one it is. Um, 
contain the text of this date variable using local conventions. Uh, and so this is a date we're concerned with and not a time. So it leads me to want to choose the to local date string, not the to local time string. So I'm going to choose to local date string. And I actually have to, that is a method. It is a function of its own. And you have to give it some options. It doesn't tell you what option to put in there, but I'm going to tell you what it is. Okay, it is English dash US. Whoop. There we go. Uh, and remember, at the end of every command, we do need to put that semicolon. It tells the interpreter that we have finished this command and we're moving on to the next thing. Okay, so that is this variable. We have another variable. Declare the date HTML variable contain the following text string right here, where date is the value of the date string variable. So now we're going to make one variable equal to something included with another variable. Um, so this is called date HTML and it's a new variable and it is equal to the string oops, h2 plus that date string value that we have already made plus we're going to close the h2 and don't forget our semicolon at the very end so oh and make sure you type your h2s correctly so this variable is going to be equal to the text of an h2 tag and inside that h2 tag is going to be whatever got stored in this date string variable. And whatever got stored in there, that's going to be the text version of the date, uh, the default text version. We didn't give it any special parameters. OK, and then the last one, we're going to create this day variable. contain the day of the week number from the this date variable. And then it gave us a hint, use the get day method. Uh, so this day equals, remember, we're going to get the day of the week and we're going to extract that from this date that we've set. Because remember, this date, when it runs, it's going to be um, the current date of whenever you run it. So if I run it tomorrow, it's going to be tomorrow's current date. If I run it at 5.07 p.m., it's going to be run at 5.07 p.m. Um, and that's the, the time that I'll be in there because the date will also have a time. So this date, they've set us a hint, use the get day. And get day is one of the methods that's in there. And this one, I don't need to give it any sort of argument. So get day with the open and close parentheses, and it will get the day from this date and assign it to the this day variable. Don't forget your semicolon at the end. All right, I think that is this whole step. And I should be able to get the check for that. Hopefully they give it to me correctly. All right, I'm looking at the, the answer key and yeah, they did not. You test this. You know, you gotta be kidding me, right? Of course, this date is not two thousand and eighteen anymore.
All right. Well, they gave me a clue here. Is they showed this code. This isn't the code that I have in there, but I did use a new date. Uh, and they want the date to be. Ah, they did tell me to make it October 12th, 2018. I for, didn't go through that part. So let me put that in there. My mistake. I passed right over there. All right. So inside the date, I'm going to make it October 12th, 2018. And try this again. I may have to put that in a quotation marks. Let's see how it runs. Nope, that looks good. Okay, so the new date function, by default, I left a blank and it picks today's date. Uh, but they wanted me to set it to, uh, oh no, not a, yeah, October 12th. 2018 and October is not actually the ninth month. It is the 10th month. But you start counting at zero. All right, so this step is done. Hopefully that made sense. That I accidentally skipped it. It was supposed to be done first. The next step is a function call using the this day variable as a parameter called the get event function to get the HTML code of the day's events and store that value. Okay. Well, they're using the wrong terminology. It's not a parameter, it's an argument. But we'll go ahead and do that anyway. We'll use the this day variable as an argument. We're going to call this get event function that we looked at already. We're going to call that function this parameter that it wants to fill. We when you when you call a function, you send it an argument, and when it gets it, it's going to turn it into, it's going to call it a parameter. So that's my, my little gripe with that. But we're going to use that function, and we're going to send it this day. Remember, we've just told this day to be the date or the day from this date. And this date is October 12th, 2018. So I don't know what day of the week that is. But it's in this variable right now, and we're going to send it to that function. And we're going to create a new variable called event HTML. Now, you can see we have event HTML here. We're going to create another one. And we are allowed to do that. Those are two different variables. This one exists outside of the function. And this one exists inside of the function. Uh, so it's called variable scope. This variable, its scope or where it's allowed to exist, it only exists inside that function. It does not exist outside of that function at all. And this variable, its scope is it only exists outside of the function. It does not exist inside of the function. Um, the function is completely self-contained. Everything that's in the function, when you call the function, it begins to exist. The function does whatever it's going to do. And then when the function finishes, all that stuff gets wiped from memory at the, at the end of the function. So you call the function, the computer will open up some memory, begin accessing the function, begin doing whatever it is that it's going to do, creating new variables, allocating memory, doing math, uh, in, inputting and outputting perhaps. And then at the very end, the function will uh, return a value that is the output of the function. And then everything from in the function will be wiped from, 
from memory, it will no longer exist, and that return value, we're going to use it on the outside of the function. So functions are completely self-contained. We currently are not in a function, okay, we're just in the file itself. Um, so they've told us that event HTML is going to be equal to the value returned from the get event function. And we need to pass to it the uh, this day variable. So I'll just copy and paste that over there. So this day will be equal to a number value representing the day of the week that we've gotten right here. We're going to give it to this function. And remember, when we looked at this function, it takes that number value and it runs this switch and it says whatever value number you give me from 0 to 6 I'm going to do this code and take all this text and stick it into this variable and then at the end whichever one of those it picks it will only pick one of course then we'll take all that text and return it to us and we've said to put it inside this new variable we've created uh, so let's get our check mark for that. Okay. And now, now we're going to insert this into our page. So now we're actually going to do something that the user could see. Okay. Um, apply the insert adjacent HTML method to the page element with the ID union today insert the value of the date HTML plus event HTML variables before the end of element contents. Document your code with descriptive comments is at the end. Uh, as the most important step, of course, after actually making code that works. Um, and of course, they cannot grade you on your comments. So I hope you do write some good comments. But uh, in the meantime, let's just get this done. So the union today ID element, first we need to tell JavaScript to get that element by its ID they've given us. So we're going to access the document object. Okay. And then we can we can scroll through all these possible things that we can do with the document. This is the HTML document. Lots and lots of things. We're going to get element by ID, give it the ID union today, and press another dot. When we type dot at the end of a real JavaScript object, the um, the IDE, the integrated development environment we have here, is going to pop up this stuff and try and help us out. So it says insert adjacent HTML. Scroll down to that. Insert adjacent HTML, which Okay, uh, and we're going to run this function, and they've said, oh, but when I have the parentheses, this, this is going to open up and ask me first, where do I insert the position? And they've told me before the end of the elements, uh, so that's actually a string keyword, before end, JavaScript likes to use uh, Pascal case where it starts lowercase every new word is an uppercase letter okay in between each of these arguments I put a comma let me give myself some more space here and then the next one is going to be a HTML string of characters and they told me insert the value of the date HTML plus the event HTML. So the date HTML, which we did right here, remember this is an H2 with the string inside of it, 
and then the event HTML, which we got from the function. So one plus the other, date HTML plus event HTML. Uh, the plus sign is a command in JavaScript for us to stick two strings of characters together. It's not going to add them. It's going to concatenate them, put one after the other immediately. All right, so we have that line and should get the check mark for that. I don't see any typos. Okay, and now we can go to the last page. That was all of the, that was it. We can refresh my page and see what it does right here. It gets today's date, October 12, 2008. Not today's date, we specifically coded that. Uh, and then it got this text from that function and stuck it in here. If we inspect this, we can look that we will see the union today ID tag. This is the element. And then we've stuck all this stuff inside of it. All right, and I should be able to submit. It has some stuff actually that it, it wants me to test my code by changing the date. I'm not going to do that because I don't have a different set of events. All right, not going to do that. I do have the 100%. I'm not going to submit it. I'm going to leave it open. All right, and that is T9 case problem to the Bridger College Student Union. Right. And we use JavaScript to fill in uh, all of this information. All right. Great.